In this exercise, we will solve the problem of transmission through a rectangular potential barrier. The results will help us understand deviation from perfect conductance in a non-ideal quantum point contact, such as shown in this figure. We consider the following quantum mechanical problem. We have an electron of energy E moving from left to right towards the potential barrier of height u0 and width a. Time independent Schrodinger's equation is given by the kinetic energy term plus a potential which is 0 outside the barrier in the regions 1 and 3 and u0 in region 2 corresponding to the barrier. We consider situations in which the energy of the electron is larger than u0 and solve the equation with an exponential ansatz in each of the three regions. For x smaller than 0, we obtain the superposition of a right propagating plane wave and the left propagating wave in region 2 we also have right and the left propagating waves and in region 3 right of the barrier we only consider a wave propagating to the right as we have no electron coming from the left from the, from the right to the left now, the wave vectors k I give are given by the energy and the potential. In region 1 and 3, we have the same vector, k1, given by E. And in the barrier, the wave vector is given by E minus u0. We have a further condition that the wave function and its derivative are continuous. We obtain this, which also has to ho hold for x equal to a and for psi prime. With this, we have enough equations to solve for the ratio of the amplitudes of the two right propagating plane waves, which is nothing else than the transmission through the barrier, which I denote T. And by solving for T, I get the following expression in which I can see that the denominator has a term periodic in k2 times a. I can simplify this expression by noting that the term k2a is actually 2 pi times the ratio of a and the de Broglie wave vector. In fact, the de Broglie wave vector is given by 2 pi over k2. And this ratio, I will denote it S. I further note that I have a simple expression for the difference of k1 square and k2 square. Which I can directly recognize in this line here. Plugging everything in, I obtain the following expression for t, where all constants a, u0, and so on have been absorbed in a term s0, where s0 squared is defined as being the following expression. Now if you look carefully at this expression, we see that the denominator has a term which is 0,
whenever s is a multiple of one half. In this, considering the definition of s, means that t is equal to one. So if this is zero, t is one. Whenever the width of the barrier is a multiple of one half times the De Vrij wavelength. And now we can interpret this result intuitively by considering the waves reflected at x equal zero and x equal a. If the distance a is equal to half the wavelength, we will have a phase shift of pi between the two waves reflected here and here, which implies destructive interference and hence a lack of reflection. If we plot T of S, our analysis is confirmed. We see that T is at most one and is exactly equal to one whenever S is a multiple of one half. Now looking back at the measurement of the non-ideal quantum point contact, we recognize that the deviations from perfect conductance on the first and the second plateau are similar to our result for the rectangular potential barrier. In fact, those deviations are due to abrupt changes in the non-ideal quantum point contact. The rectangular barrier is a paradigmatic example of a potential barrier in one dimension which changes non-adiabatically, which means abrupt, abruptly, in space. Two further remarks can be made about the non-ideal point contact. We observe that magnetic field suppresses those deviations from perfect conductance, which uh, is linked to a suppression of backscattering by magnetic field. Furthermore, on the higher plateaus, we see that the conductance exceeds the quantized value. This indicates mode mixing. In fact, higher modes contribute to conductance, increasing its value beyond what is expected at this plateau. 